Yo, what is up, guys? It's Feudal Boy back at it again with another tier list video. And uh, yeah, today we are going to be doing a Cled mid tier list since a lot of you guys in the comment section did ask for this after the top lane one. So yeah, we're going to be moving on to the mid lane tier list today for Cled for patch 11.7. I know in the other video I accidentally said 10.7. My bad. <laughs> I just, just, my brain was turned off. But yeah, we're going to be doing it for a patch 11.7. And, uh, yeah. For anyone wondering why at the start, like, it's all, they're all, like, bunched up together, it's because I couldn't find any tier lists that were, like, updated that only had the mid lane champs, so I had to do this by hand. And all the rest of the champs, like, are there, so, like, I just gotta get rid of them. So, this will look a lot cleaner when I actually, like, start raiding them, but, yeah. But, yeah, let's get right into this. Don't want to ramble on too, too much. And, uh, yeah. I think what I'm gonna do this time, last time I just went by alphabetical, but I think this time I'm just gonna go from top to bottom. We'll go by Doom matchups, then, like, move our way down, I think. But, um, yeah, so first off, in the Doom tier, I'm gonna be putting none other than Mr. Victor. This champion has been very popular this season ever since the item rework, due to the fact that he just has a ton of, like, base... Or, actually, he doesn't have, like, a ton of, like, damage early, but it's really good poke damage and he can farm from really far distances he has really good scaling and yeah he's just he's a very very obnoxious champion to deal with and obviously with Kled, since you're a melee champ it's pretty hard to actually do much in lane against like poke champs like this that can just farm from really far distances so he can end up just poking you out of lane and just not allowing you to shove the wave in roam and yeah it just feels really doomed you're just kind of stuck in the lane with him so that's why it just feels really really bad to play against him next up we got leblanc this champion's super obnoxious as well because obviously she's also like another champ that can hard harass you in lane alongside just having insane mobility from her W. And yeah, she's just a very, very aggressive lane bully that can melt you, dismount you off of like one or two full combos. So it's just very annoying to have to deal with. And yeah, she just negates you from being able to shove in the waves and getting lane prio. And then she can set up for ganks really easily too with her chain. So it's a very, very annoying matchup. Another one I'm going to be putting into the Doom tier is where she is. Syndra. Syndra is also really, really bad for Cled mid, just due to the fact that she can poke you out once again, farm from far distances, and also she has her E, which allows her to disengage you off of her whenever you're trying to engage onto her. And she also, on top of that, has an execute on her ult, so when you're dismounted, she can just ult you and you're basically just getting one shot. So it's just very, very annoying. And yeah, she's pretty obnoxious to have to deal with. So, yeah, those are like the very, very doomed matchups. Another matchup I guess we could potentially put up there is actually Azir. Because he's just like Victor. He can farm from pretty far distances and just hard poke you out. The one nice thing about Azir, though, is if the Azir does misposition, like, there is potential to, pot like, possibly all in him. If, like, he super overextends. But if the Azir is playing it correctly, it's actually pretty hard to ever do anything against him. And he's just going to hard poke you out and out shove you. And obviously with Kled mid, I've mentioned this before, but you want to be shoving in waves and just looking to roam around the map and apply pressure. And yeah, he kind of just negates that, so it's kind of annoying. And now for like the more Doom matchups for like ADC wise, I'll actually be putting Tristana and Lucian both up here just because they both just do a shit ton of damage and just also can peel off you pretty easily. And those are really, really annoying matchups, so... Yeah, I'd definitely put Tristana and Lucian both up in Doom just because they have super high burst and can peel off you really easily. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for the Doom tier since yeah, those are all like super, super annoying matchups. Next up, we're going to go into the more difficult tier, which I'm going to start off with Pantheon. It's just like top lane. Pantheon just has a lot of burst damage and he has an execute on his Q. So it's just very hard to ever like really pressure him in lane. And yeah, if you ever try to over like walk up and like trade with him, he'll just out trade you, and it's just gonna feel really bad early on. Another matchup that's gonna be going into the Doom tier is, uh, what do I put here? See, I didn't think about this like too too much when I get to this, because <laughs> like you know, you never think there's too many champions until you actually see this. I didn't realize there was like 60 plus champions mid lane. I thought top lane had a lot of champs, but this is like double the amount. It's like crazy. But another matchup I'd probably say is pretty difficult would be, I'd say Anivia is pretty difficult. Because just like Victor and Azir, Anivia, once she gets level 6, she can just pretty much shove you in. 
and you just can never really roam around the map and make plays happen so it's just very annoying to have to do anything against her and also she has her passive egg so even if you get an all-in onto her you might not even have enough burst damage to kill her afterwards because she could just stall out so this is very annoying uh another matchup that's pretty annoying and difficult would probably be uh what else would i put I don't even know. Man, this is always so hard. Like, with top lane, it's a lot easier to say just because, like, it's very, like, 1v1 focused. But in, like, these, like, mid lane tier lists, it's kind of, like, aw like, awkward to, like, rate some of these. I might just start doing it from alphabetical at this point because, like, I'm getting to the point now where I'm, like, kind of debating on where I want to put these. So, yeah, we, we got, like, most of them out of the way. They're, like, pretty hard. Ari, I'm going to say, is probably an even skill matchup just because she does have a lot of poke. Uh, and good mobility, but at the same time, if she does overextend pre six, it's very easy to actually punish her because she doesn't have her dashes from her ult early on. So early on in lane, you can't look for a potential all ins onto her because uh, her auto range is, isn't like too too far. It's just more of the fact that you just have to make sure you're not getting poked out by her Qs. But yeah, it's not too too bad. I'm also gonna be putting a Kali into more of an even matchup mid lane. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, I put her as difficult in top lane. But uh, for mid lane, she's more even just because the lane's a lot shorter, so it's a lot harder for her to actually like run you down and like hard harass you in lane. Since like obviously like mo for the most part, you're not even looking to fight with trade with her too too much. You're mostly just looking to shove it out. And if she ever does like apply pressure onto you, you can just hover your turret and then yeah, just set up for an easy gank up with your jungler. Since although Akali does have her E dash, like other than that, like it's she can't really escape ganks too too well. And a lot of the times too, there's been a, a lot of Akali mains running TP ignite, so it's pretty easy to punish it. Annie, honestly, I'm I might even put Annie as a favored matchup. Yeah, I, I'd say Annie's more of a favored matchup because she has very low mobility, very telegraph spells, and yeah, it's just really free. The only time you can engage on an Annie is when her stun's up. So as long as you're playing off her, like, her passive stun, and you go in when she has never stun available, you just beat her for free. So it's really free to uh, kill her. Aesol is another very favored matchup. You can't really do much against you. Because, uh, yeah, if he ever walks up for minions, you can just EQ onto him, and he can't peel, off, peel you off him very easily. So it feels pretty free. Brand... I never really see this champion to be honest, but I'd say it's more of an. I'm gonna put him as even, just because like I I don't see it too too much, but I do know Brent does have a lot of poke early on, so you have to be very careful about that, and you can actually shove waves pretty easily. But yeah, I personally don't see the matchup too too much. I'm not like 100% sure on this one, so that's why I'm just gonna leave it as even. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit more difficult or even more favored, just depending on like, I guess how the lane's going like if he's like perma shoving into you and you're not getting super harassed like i guess it's like pretty easy to engage on him because he doesn't have a dash or anything but at the same time if he knows how to like wave manage correctly and like freezes near his turret and so you can't actually roam and just harasses you and sets up for ganks i feel like it go really bad as well so i'd say that's like more of like a 50 50. uh cassiopeia this is another one where it's like i'd say it's more even as long as you're not getting like constantly harassed by her Q, it's usually not the worst thing in the world. But if she, if the Cassio is really good at landing her Q, it's very hard to actually like pressure her in lane. And then yeah, she just takes over and upscales you in the one v one. So you just got to be very careful with uh, Cassiopeia's Q. But overall, it's not too too bad because you can outshove a Cassio once you start getting items, as long as like you're not too far behind early on. And yeah, if she ever extends too far, you can also just look for engages onto her. So it's not too too bad. Cho'Gath mid is, honestly, I might even, uh, for now, I'm going to keep him as favorite, but I might even bring him down to easy AF at the end, just because right now it's like, kind of awkward to put it down here since all the champs are here. So I might rearrange some of these at the very end, but yeah, Cho'Gath, it's just like top lane. It's very easy early on until he starts getting like items and stuff and post six, but you can hard out ship a Cho'Gath and you don't really have to fight him ever. So it's pretty free. Corky, I'd say is pretty favored early on. Because Corky takes a while to scale. He does have a little bit of poke, but it's usually not too, too bad. And then, yeah, if you ever overextends, you can just EQ onto him. And his, as long as he doesn't have a package, his W isn't far enough away to where... Or, like, far enough distance to which it's going to disengage your second E. So you can just re-cast your E and just stick onto him for free. 
Diana is another very like favorite matchup because she's a melee champion that has very low base armor. So early on, if she ever tries to engage onto you, you just land your Q onto her and this will her down with your full combo. So she can't really do much against you. It's the same with Echo too. Like both these champions are melee mages that have very low base armor early on. So if they try to fight you, they just get melted for free. So it's pretty free. Fizz, I'd say, is more of an even matchup. He can dodge your Q with his E, obviously, and he also just has pretty high burst. And if he ever dismounts you and he has his ult available, he can start his ult at you and 100 to 0 you, kind of like an execute. Because I'm not sure if it's actually considered an execute or not his ult, but it does a shit ton of damage, especially when you're dismounted, like with this full combo. So you just got to be very careful about getting bursted out by him. But it's usually not too, too bad. Galio. I'd say it's also like more of an even matchup. It can go either way. If he goes aftershock, it's very annoying to ever like fight him. You can't really engage on him. He's just gonna be tanky and annoying. But he can't really kill you either as long as you're not getting hard harassed early on by his Qs. So yeah, and then once you start getting items, you can just outshove him and roam. The only annoying thing is he obviously like he has this global. Well, it's not global, but it's like it's like a semi-global ult. So like he can follow your roams pretty easily, but it's usually not too too bad. Greg is mid, I'm also going to put his even. Depending on how, what the Greg is builds, uh, if he goes AP, it's usually not too, too bad. Like, you can usually 100 to 0 him. But if he goes the tanky build, it's very annoying to actually, like, poke him in lane or, like, fight him in lane. And then also, he can just walk up to the wave and just annoy you and not really allow you to, like, shove and roam too much. So, it's very annoying to deal with. So yeah, it's kind of like the top, where if he goes tank, like, you can't really do anything in lane. But if he goes more, like, damagey, then there's potential to actually kill him and make plays around the map. Heimer. Oh yeah, this is another matchup. I, I'm honestly going to put Heimer as a Doom matchup. I forgot about Heimer. So yeah, he's another Doom matchup, actually. Because he could just hard shove you in the whole game. You can never really move, and you're never going to have power for your jungler. So it's just going to feel really, really bad to uh, play. And your jungler is just going to get really tilted, to be honest. And yeah, your team's just gonna mental boom. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Next up, we have Irelia. Irelia is kind of like a Kali where it's like, it's a little bit easier than top lane just because the lane's a lot shorter. But at the same time, it's still an Irelia, right? So she can still just melt your HP bar if you're not careful. So you just gotta be very careful with how you uh, trade against her. But usually against an Irelia, you can shove out the waves pretty easily once you get your team at or like your spike whip, whatever you're going to be going mid lane. And yeah, it's not too big of an issue. So I'd keep Rose an even matchup build, to be honest. Karthus is definitely a favored matchup. He has very low base armor, and yeah, he has to walk. He, he does have his Q to poke a bit, but if the guy ever walks up at all, you just EQ on him and he can't disengage off you. He's really fucked if he tries to walk up too far, so... Yeah, it's pretty free. I might honestly bring him down to easy F at the end. Kassadin is a super easy matchup. I'm honestly just going to leave the Kassadin there. Same with uh, Katarina. I think both these champions are easy AF. Even Actually, all three of these are really easy. Kassadin, Katarina. Actually, I'll put Katarina as favored. You know what? Yeah, I think Katarina could actually win. Potentially, if it's like a really, really good Katarina. But for the most part, Katarina, she has to come into you and she has really low base armor. So if she ever tries to engage onto you with her daggers, you just throw your Q onto her and then, and yeah, you just hard out trade her. And then yeah, Kassadin and Kale just are very, very weak early game champions but have very low mobility. So if they walk up, you just can melt them for free. Lissandra, I'll probably put as even. I feel like Lissandra, it's just like, she's just gonna perma shove the waves. You're not really gonna be able to fight her. And yeah, it's just gonna be like an AFK farm land. Man, it's gonna be kind of annoying to try to roam because she has pretty good wave clear. So it's pretty annoying. Lulu is honestly also an even matchup because she actually does have pretty good wave clear and poke early on. I know it sounds kind of troll, but she actually is like a pretty strong laner early on against most melee champions. So you gotta be careful with how you uh, trade against her. You don't really want to be fighting her too, too much. You're just looking, looking to uh, farm out the waves, just get your items, and then hopefully get enough. Goal to which you'll be able to start showing up waves in this roaming. Lux is another super easy matchup, so I'm going to keep her down here in easy AF. Melzar I'll probably put as favored, just because he's another one of those champions where he does have pretty decent wave clear, but if he ever walks up at all, you just EQ on him and he just gets one shot. So, you just got to be careful with not getting poked out too, too much by his like Q and his E. But other than that, it's usually pretty free. 
Nico is another lane I'm gonna put as favored. She also has a pretty decent poke, but if she overextends at all, you just melt her. So she, it, I feel like it's kind of like a pattern. It's like if the champion, like these mages, have very like low mobility, or just like are very very low base armored. It's like if they ever like do anything to try to like contest the wave, you can just engage onto them and just kill them for free. Nocturne. Honestly, I don't know if I want to put Nocturne as even, or maybe I just put him in difficult, honestly, since it kind of feels a little bit empty. Honestly, I might even put Irelia up. You know what? I'm going to put Irelia in difficult as well, honestly, just because Irelia has a lot of, like, damage. Both of these champions, like, just have really high base damage early on and are very, very cheesy champs, so you just got to be careful with trading with them and, yeah, just not overextending too, too much to where they can just engage out of you. So yeah, I'm actually going to move Aurelia up. I think it's better to keep her up there than to uh, keep her in even just because she is still very, very difficult and she just hard out skills you at one item. So, yeah. Oriana, I'd say, is an even matchup. It's kind of like the Ari matchup where she has very good poke early on. And it's just very annoying to have to lane against because you can't really get lane pry out for your jungler early on. But once you start getting items, it's usually not too, too bad. Like on your first second back, you should be able to start to like engage onto her for free. Pike mid, in my opinion, Pike mid's actually like. A f Do I want to put a? I I might put it on honestly as an even matchup, but I I'm slightly leaning towards favor to be honest, is because the thing with Pike is he likes uh obviously like poking out slowly and just like going in and out and like using his passive to like regen his health. But with Kled, you can just stick onto the guy very easily with your EQ. So, like, if he's pushed up at all, if you EQ onto him, you can follow his E with your second E. And you're not going to get stunned by it either. So, it's, like, very easy to stick onto the guy and just 100 to 0 him. Obviously, though, if you're dismounted, it's you have to be very careful because of his jungler comes. Or he has his full combo back up. He can just 100 to 0 you while you're dismounted because of his execute. But other than that, it's usually pretty free. Kiana is another favored matchup. She's kind of like the uh, Diana Echo in a sense where it's like she wants to be in your face, but she has very, very low base like armor early on. And also her whole thing is like she can get her grass cues, you know, and just like poke you out and be invis. But if you land your E or Q onto her, you have true sight, obviously. So you can just engage onto her while she uses her Q and just 100 to 0 her for free. Swain, uh, I honestly think Swain's another like super easy matchup. I'm just gonna keep him under easy AF. I'm pretty sure, cause yeah, you have your Q for the heat reduction, and the guy doesn't have that much base damage early on. So if he overextends, you just melt him for free. Rise, I'm gonna put as another even skill matchup. He has very good poke and wave clear early on, but once again, if he overextends, he just dies. I feel like a broken record at this point, man. I'm just saying the same things over and over again. It's like, if your laner just plays it bad, you'll be able to punish them. But at the same time, if they play it smart, it's kind of tricky. But yeah, it's another matchup where it's like, if he overextends, he just gets punished. But if he's smart, he won't die too much. So, yeah. Silas is definitely a favored matchup. He's honestly on the verge of being an easy AF matchup. Just because, like, he's playing around his uh, W healing, right? And as Clad, you obviously have healing reduction on your Q. And he has low base armor as Silas. So if he ever tries to fight you, you just land your Q out of him and it's 100 to 0 for free. Or just hard win those trades. Uh, actually, I'm going to put Swain up in favor. I feel like, compared to these matchups, he's still a little bit trickier. But yeah, I'll keep him and Silas around the same. See, like, this is the one thing. I'm, like, very, like, hesitant with where I want to put these because, like, it could go either way. It could either be, like, one of the easiest lanes of your life or something can go wrong and it can feel, like, pretty bad. Talia, I'm going to put as an even matchup because just because she can farm from pretty far away. But, obviously, if she overextends, it's really easy to kill. Talon is a very easy matchup. I'd say it's another favored one because just, like, the Diana, the Echo... Silas Kiana, he wants to be engaging onto you, or he wants to be in your face, but obviously Kled just has better base stats on a talent early on for like armor and stuff because he's a bruiser. And also you have the true sight and you can follow his E over the wall with your EQ as long as you land your E on top of him beforehand. So it's very easy to stick onto him 
I just, yeah, burst him out pretty easily. TF is an even matchup. It's not too bad early on, but obviously, like, he has his ult, so he can follow your realms, which is kind of annoying. Which, honestly, you know what? I'm going to put him as difficult, just because of his, like, the ability he has to, like, be able to, like, contest your realms with his ult. Another thing, too, on why Nocturne is also hard, I forgot to mention this, but um, he also has his ult, so he can follow you as well. Like, the ones that can follow your ults are pretty, like, annoying to deal with. Same with Pantheon, he has his ult to follow your roams. Like, all these champions, like, have, like, roam timers that they can follow you. The one reason why I'm not putting Galio, though, as uh, difficult is just because, like, he's, a, uh, he's an easier melee uh, champion to fight rather than, like, a Nocturne, Aurelia, or Pantheon. Just because he doesn't have as much base damage, like, burst damage as, and DPS over time as, like, these champions do. So it's like, you could still like trade into him pretty easily. And he also doesn't have like super high base armor on the other line. So yeah. Viego. I'm going to put him as an even matchup. Out of the times I've played against it, it's either I've hard popped off against the Viego or it's just felt like I felt like I just can never kill him and he just outscales me. So it's like, he, the Viego has a really good base sustain in lane from his Q passive. But at the same time, it's like he's he wants to be fighting into you, which is obviously your strength because you want to be landing your full combo on him. So... I feel like if you if the Viego tries to fight you pre six especially, I feel like you just hard beat him in lane, and you can just get Pryo and just take over. But if the Viego just doesn't force too many fights on you early and you just start scaling, he'll just be able to take over in the lane. So you just want to be trying to pressure the Viego like pre six, and just trying to like get an advantage on him before he starts to like, get his like ninja tabbies and stuff and just slowly outscales you. Seraphine, uh, I'm gonna put her as even. She's another matchup where, like, if she overextends, you can definitely punish her. But she has very, very good wave clear and can farm from far distances. So it's kind of hard to actually, like, punish her early on unless she makes a mistake by, like, overextending. So, yeah, she's just another very annoying champion to deal with. Yasuo Yone, I'm both just going to put as a favored matchup. Because they're another one of those champions like Diana, Echo, all of them, where it's, like, they want to be in your face. But you just have better base stats than them in the 1v1 early on, so they just can't really fight you. So you just abuse them pretty easily. And like against the Yasuo, for example, like you just gotta make sure you're not getting baited by his wind wall, like throwing your Q into his wind wall. What you can do to like bait out Yasuo's wind wall is you can E and hold onto your Q, and once his wind wall th gets thrown out, then you can Q on him afterwards. Instead of just EQing, because uh, most of the times Yasuo, as soon as I see your e, e, those automatically throw out their wind wall because they're expecting the EQ. So if you just hold onto your Q until you're on top of him, then you can just land the EQ for free. And yeah, it's really easy to kill him. I'm actually going to put Zoe as difficult. I forgot about this champion. <laughs> I haven't seen this champion too much recently, but Zoe's actually a very, very annoying champion to have to deal with. She honestly might even be like near the Doom tier, just because she has so much poke in her ass. And very, very good gank setup. Because if she lands her bubble on you, you're basically just fucked. So she's a very, very, very annoying bad matchup for sure. Zillion, uh, it's another even matchup. You can't, he's kind of like Seraphine, but you're not really going to be able to, like, do much against him early on unless he, like, makes a big mistake overextending, just because he can farm from pretty, farm from pretty far distances and has pretty decent, like, just poke from his bombs, so it's pretty annoying to deal with. And also, he has his revive, so he can negate you from being able to even getting a kill sometimes, and just baiting you into an engage and then get along his juggler just clean you up, so it's pretty annoying. Rumble, I'm going to put as difficult, just because he has good wave clear and pretty high base damage early on. The one thing, though, about this matchup is if he tries to fight you, like, levels 3 to 5, and you have Ignite up, I'm, for the most part, as long as you're not, like, super chunked out already, you can usually bait him into, like, wasting all of his abilities to dismount you, and then you can just run at him and just kill him for free, because he doesn't have, like, super high base armor early on. But if he makes it through the first, like, 5-6 levels without getting, like, punished it becomes super super hard to do anything because he'll have better wave player than you and harass and he'll probably just rush a seeker's arm grud to where he's just going to be super super tanky and not take too, like damage at all answer combos so it's just going to be really annoying uh zara hmm i think i'm going to put zara as an favored matchup i feel like he can't really do too much against you he's he's obviously has some poke but for the most part it's like it's not too bad because like most of the times when he's looking for the poke he's gonna have to walk up and land and you can just look for an engage on him when he walks up for minions and you just 
engage in 100 0 really easily. So I'd say he's like a favorite matchup. Velkal is also is like the same boat. Like both of these champions, actually, or should, I don't know. Maybe I should just put them into even just because like they're kind of like Seraphine and Dillian, where it's like they can farm from far distances. But if they make a mistake, yeah, you can punish them. So you know what? Actually, I'll just put them as even. But I'm honestly kind of like leaning towards more favored. Like these are definitely like the easiest even matchups I'd on this list probably because like as long as like they make one mistake, like you'll just take over in the lane. But if they just play it very safe, then they can just free farm and skill. So I'll, I'll keep it as even, but it's usually pretty free. Zed is an even skill matchup. He does have a lot of burst, and obviously he has his ult at level 6 that can execute you. But overall, it's usually not too, too bad as long as you're just landing your Qs on him early on in lane. And yeah, just playing for Pryo, and it's usually not too bad. You can just outrun him, rum him, and... Yeah, if he ever tries to all in you pre six, it's usually pretty free for you to just be able to hard out trade him because you have better base stats. Yeah, yeah, it's usually pretty free if uh, he forces too much. But if he just plays it smart and plays it safe, it can be a very annoying matchup to where he's just gonna eventually get enough like items to like be like a big threat in team fights. But overall, it's not too bad. Vlad, I'm gonna keep as an easy AF matchup just because obviously like it's just like top lane where. He can never really fight you. And if he walks up, he just like, dies for free. Ziggs, I'll put his even matchup just because he can just chill and farm with his Q and E. And then he has his W to disengage you if you try to EQ. If he throws his W, he'll just knock you away. So yeah, he can just free farm. That's pretty annoying. And then Vagar. I'm going to put Vagar as favored. Just because he doesn't have very high base damage early on. So it's pretty easy to shove him. The only thing that's kind of annoying is he does have decent like range on his abilities, but yeah, if you ever overextend, she just dies for free, and it's usually not too bad. But um, yeah, I think that's honestly how my tier list is probably gonna end off. <laughs> I don't think I want to move. Like I'm, I'm just gonna look through this quickly because we got Vic. Like all these look pretty good. Sympathies. Like I think these. Yeah, this is probably like the most accurate I'd have because like I've already swapped through a lot. But. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> Sorry, this one was this one felt a little bit more hectic and chaotic than the other one. So my bad if it like was a little bit more like confusing. Just because there's so many more champions. I'm trying to like make it so the video is not too too long. So yeah, I just didn't want to make it like super super long. So I didn't go as in depth as I did with the top lane ones just because there's a lot more champions. But um yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh let me know in the comments if you guys would change any of these matchups and uh what ones you like agreed on. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, also, let me know if, like, you guys want to see, like, see more educational stuff in the future. Like, I'm thinking about potentially starting to do some, like, VOD reviews very soon of, like, some of my, like, games when I'm playing on, like, my Masters GM account. And, like, talking about my thought process and stuff like that and how to, like, play it through lanes and all that. But, um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely subscribe if you guys are new and enjoyed the video. But, um, yeah, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care and peace.